Hey guys, welcome back into more RDR2. We are going to hope that this playthrough, this particular episode, goes smoothly. The air traffic in my area has been insane today. But we are finally going to make our way to Dutch and try to save Abigail's kid, because that's apparently important. And I'm sure if this was a real situation, Abigail would have killed us by now for really not making any effort to go save her child. Oh my. But oh well. Another morning. Swanson. You and your issues. <sighs> That's all going on. Well. It looks like we'll live to see at least a few more days. Folks are happy, Arthur. Happy? Well. They're fed, which is the next best thing. <laughs> Yeah, but we're also missing someone. Ooh, there's a question mark. Who are we talking to this time? Still one of the girls? Aw, it's Mary hey, Beth Arthur. again. You wanna talk? Arthur always needs to talk. Except Arthur. Our boy needs some therapy. This is as close as we're getting. You okay, Arthur? Sure. You don't look okay. Uh, I'm fine. What you been doing? <sighs> Acting like a fool. How so? Killing and robbing folks I didn't need to. My, you have been busy. <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. You're a good man, Arthur. Underneath, I mean. I've lost my mind, Mary Beth. Finally happened. I, I don't feel in control. Just stay calm and do what you do best. It seems I'm best in mayhem. Sure, I'm no better than Micah. Yes, you are. <laughs> Just do what you gotta do. Everyone's better than Micah. Stop getting into trouble. <clears throat> we'll see. I love Mary Beth. She's the sweetest. Oh, I haven't talked to Tilly since we got back. Talking. <laughs> I haven't talked to Tilly Thank since we got back. Thank you for your help with Miss Jackson. Uh, yeah, of course. Don't mention him, Miss Grimshaw. You're a fine man, Mr. Morgan. Sometimes, at least. Thank you. Arthur's great Thank all the time. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay. Swanson. Hi. You all right there? I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, I... Is that... T no. You joining That's just us? Guitar. Gentlemen. Hello. Como estas? Don't know how we got anything done before you joined us. Huh. I like to keep busy. Anyway, keep it up. Sounds good. Everything good? I guess. I hope so. Yes, see you later. Let's see, let's see, let's you know see. Something? You boys don't know you're born. This isn't tough. This is easy. Easy. <laughs> tough as a dead cow. Surrounded by icebergs. Slowly starving. And okay. Then and then the boat comes down with the plague. And men are dying like it's a race. The parson, he can't keep up with the funerals. We're burying them two, three at a time, and there's 50 sharks. Chasing the boat just to feast on the corpses. This is a picnic. Tough. That ain't tough. See, sharks, that's a holiday. Oh. Tough as arriving in a new city. Both your parents newly dead. No one looking after you except some scumbags you meet on the street. Folks starving, right, people desperate. <sighs> well, how old were you? Nine. Nine. Nine years old, I've been living on my wits. 
chance to see that, uh, that'd be a joy. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, sharks are nothing compared to human beings. That I can't agree with. Now, maybe you're right. I guess all life is brutal in its own way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's all just a miserable waste of time. <laughs> Appalling. Dreadful. You know, maybe that's the point. Aw, that was a nice little bonding moment. Learned a little bit more about Uncle, too. Good morning, to you. Good morning, Arthur. Don't work too hard. I work smart. Oh, you do, do you? All right, Morgan. <laughs> Arthur's way of saying you don't work. I still don't see Tilly, but that might have to wait till later. Oh, she could be in the house. Hey. Let's do a quick little check-in. And if she's not there... Um, the professor's mission, I think, is what's also on the map, but I'll have to double check. And then we have to go see Dutch. Oh, there's a couple people walking around past these little bridge here. Mostly just see Karen. All right. Let's go ahead and get on our way. We need... Ah, this is the professor. Oh, a little bit worried about the, um... He's working on the electric chair, isn't he? Ah, that's gonna be fun. We'll definitely check in on that and then go see Dutch and go ahead and get that mission. I've been just kind of running around. I haven't really done anything important, but I still haven't gotten this mission to pop back up. So I assume it'll do so at some point, but I just have to keep an eye on that because I've been looking at it different times of the day and it hasn't came back, but I assume at some point. Because it did look like a stranger mission. Well, we are going to run by there. So I guess there's nothing wrong with double checking when we're actually in the vicinity. I just had to be close to it. Okay, it's there now. Uh, should I just go this way? Because it is past this pond. You're good, Hammer. Just go in between the posts. Okay, it should be... Oh, I think I see it. That dock there? Okay. We're good. Yes, it's gotta be. Let's check this out. What the bloody bastards! Oh. Why do I waste my time? Why? You okay? You okay, bud? No. Fantastic. You Americans are nothing but shysters and traitors and <laughs> slippery tongue bull suckers. I'm inclined to agree. Ah, here. Help me, please. Back to work with a bloody smile. <laughs> no problem, Marco. You are the great genius, so we shove the hot poker up the ice. <laughs> Say thank you, Marco. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What are you, some kind of European toy maker? No, I am a fucking genius with poker up the ice, <laughs> like I say. I like him. <laughs> toy maker. Hello? Do I look like I should entertain children? Not really. No. <laughs> no, he says. No. <laughs> I am the savior of the mankind, buddy. Yes, you meet him. Professor Marco Dragic. <laughs> the one the silver-tongued American betray and, and not pay the money to. Yes, he told to shit, man. Uh. So, uh, what's this toy about? It is not a toy, Big Nuts. It is demonstration of my genius, of my ideas about the source of life. Okay. Oh, it's a toy boat. Yes, it is a toy boat that I can power remotely using electricity and waves you cannot see. Good for oh, you. Nice. 
Ways I cannot see. And still the investors will not come. Just a couple of old ladies and a moron. <laughs> ladies, please. <laughs> Ladies! Gentlemen! Enchanté! Hello! Hello, sir! Okay, uh, how is the piles? Yeah? Good, good, good. Okay, my friends, you are about to witness history. A demonstration of my infinite insight. All of us, we feel old. You. You are old, oh. but oh. maybe I can make you immortal. Mm. <laughs> Using waves you cannot see, I will power this You're boat. a goddamn fraud. Oh. And this buffoon dressed up like a buffoon is a stoolie. I watch them conspire, you morons. <laughs> I never met this buffoon before two minutes ago. Isn't that right? Which yeah. part of it? So, Professor. Show us your magical toy boat. Only this time, let the buffoon control it. Check if there's any funny business. No, this ain't nothing to do with me. Come, please, please. Uh, it oh, is I could use a toy boat. Any moron could do it, and I am about to prove that. Here, oh. take this. And so mean, this, Arthur. And uh, don't touch that. Okay, won't touch it. Use these ones to steer, and uh, right. this one to shoot torpedoes. Okay. Yes, now, now blow up the Put little the battleships torpedoes on this? and they avoid the sea mines. They have magnets attached. Make a nasty explosion if they touch the bot. Okay. Okay! If this silly dimwit can use torpedoes on both to destroy the ah. battleships, imagine what technology can do in the hands of certified genius! Oh my god. And I have certificate. Wait, no. Okay, I'm a little bit off. Go away, mine. mine. I'm not gonna touch the mine. You see what he does? But I probably should no not try to blow telegraph. this thing up right next no to it. No pulley system underwater. Only waves in the air. This is remarkable. Okay. Yeah. Look at those poor boys on the HL Hunley. Eight of them perished to a mere five on the Housatonic. And what a way to go. Trapped in a box at the bottom of the bay. I suppose you intend to make an unmanned killing machine? You misunderstand. This is the secret to life, not death. The transmigration of the soul. I'm like partially I listening to his metal metal pitch. Like man. Well, I'm not Get sure. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you see what he does? Now bring the boat back to the dock. That sure was something, but I'm not sure what, if anything, was proven here. The, the, the demonstration's not over yet. Any okay. tool can explore the seating dock. Next, I was gonna say it's kind of a stretch to go from motorized dots. toy boat to immortality, well, but right. mind, I'm listening. <laughs> Let me just reload. <laughs> this is really remarkable. This is just a, a demonstration of my prowess, sir. <laughs> the real miracles require investment. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, I get to go the again? dimwit will use invisible waves to destroy the little sailing boats before they get to other side of pond. Yeah. Still avoiding magnetic mines. What happens if I oh, hit the real boat? To at least. Shush! You're not here for this smart hawk. Come, 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 come. Oh, dang it. What? The steam train. The telegraph machine. I probably shouldn't have tried to kill the real people, but also in in comparison to this technology, we are not reliant on wires or coal or gasoline. No, Turn. no just no. rays. You'll not in escape the air. me. Like the voice of God. And funding from us. And funding from you, of course, but one thing to fuck? The two rules of seas. Very good. Very good. Now bring in the boat back here. Foolproof! Undeniably gone. foolproof! But you are not fools. And unlike fools, not fools and their money are difficultly parted. And was this not difficult? It was difficult, but it was not difficult. <laughs> and then, as I say, any fool, huh? Thank you, thank you. What is that? It is the stuff of life, 
sir. It's incredible. No, no, no. Incredible things are in my lab back at Dover Hill. That will astound all of you. Mr. Marcel. Okay, Dover can Hill. Can I count on your support? Well, this is expensive. It is immortality, sir. It is, it is very cheap. Perhaps over lunch. Maybe. I'm gonna go. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and thank you. Um, if you're ever up near Dover Hill, pay me a visit. Uh, there, I'll have to. I will really amaze you. I don't think I've uh, been to a Dover I Hill yet, but we'll remember the name. European coarseness. In the Balkans, we are a mannerless people, but we work hard. <laughs> now, let me go over the investment with you once more. And, and, and this is for... Ah, uh, at least Arthur had fun, too. No. It is for humanity itself. You see... You see, I have now illustrated just a small sliver of the miracles I can enact on this earth. If you will help me and not stab me in the ass like the other Americans... Oh, buddy, I think you just lost your investment. All of you goddamn traitors! None of you has the wisdom to invest in my genius! Genius! Please I thought it was cool. Like you're fools. All of you. What, can I go talk to them and maybe convince them otherwise? Hey, give this man money. Oh, yeah, that's the guy that, uh... Called it a show. Called it fake. Anything else I can help you with? No, no, you've done quite enough. Now you can leave me alone. You packed up real quick. All right, but that was fun. We'll have to figure out where Dover Hill is. Okay then, girl. Come on, Normandy. Oh wait, this is girl, Hammerhead. Hey, girl. Kinda miss Normandy. All right, professor time. Did not so mean to through our humble police house. Hello? Professor, I'm here for a show. Can I help you with something, <clears throat> Chief? I'm representing the inventor of a humane execution machine. An electric chair. And he, uh, he wants to demonstrate his invention here. Ah, I'm familiar with the man and his work. Tell you what, I'll give you a permit, but it's going to cost you $100 in fees. Negotiate? Negotiate's probably going to lead me on, like, another side mission, though. And I do have plenty of money. I'll give well. the money. Take the money. Okay, well, the price is fair. Here you go. Not really, but take the money. Here, is your permit. A pen in the usual formalities, of course, such as uh, finding a suitable candidate for humane dispatchment. I'll tell that to the professor. Good luck. All right. We have ourselves a permit to electrocute someone. Is he still in his normal spot? Because if he is, then we probably will just go see Dutch. Oh, I forgot we could go see Charles again. Dutch can wait. Dutch can do whatever Dutch has been doing for the past couple of days. Dutch is the new Micah. Might even go see a show while I'm here. I think we can all tell I'm not too invested in finding that kid right now. I'm sure the child is fine. I've been wanting to go see a show for a while now. Oh, can I not ask about the show? Is there anything telling me what show there is? Probably outside. But you know what? We're just gonna pay. It's two dollars. Hey, uh, the performers asked me to come see them here. I helped them out with something up in Van Horn. All right, I'll let them know you're in. Curtain's just about come up, so... 
Why don't you take a seat, then come back and see me after the show? Okay. <laughs> All right. Luckily, this time we didn't have to pay and get robbed again. Ridiculous. Can I go in this way? Finally, I can get in. All right, where to sit? Let's sit up front. Sir, stop following me. No, no, they're gonna take my seat. I, dang it. Fine. Hello. Sit here. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I am your host, Aldridge T. Abington. Thank you. Yes, oh, Aldridge I T. Abington. Few men have had a career more crowded with fun. incident and various intercourse with the world than I. During extensive travel through this and foreign lands, I have procured a show so fantastical there okay. exists nothing like it anywhere. In an effort to bring this entertainment to even the poorest dreamer of dreams, I have determined the ticket price should be very low and the show held without a profit. To me, How it's true. That? For it is <laughs> blessing enough to bring these gifted artists to you. I Let's met get on these the show. odd fellows in a tavern in some godforsaken place. Entertaining cretins. They are quite a capricious bunch. Presenting Miss Marjorie and her medical miracles. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get to the show, and then we have to go find Margaret at some point. Miss Marjorie's medical miracle, Bertram the Pinheaded Giant. Hey, Bertram. <laughs> he ain't even as smart as he looks. <laughs> but what he lacks in brain, he makes up for in brawn. Our half witted Hercules is as strong as a bull. He's you, sir, would you assist? Me? No, you. No, a trunk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see it. Don't make him mad, buddy. Oh. Yeah. You look like a strapping young lad. I want you to hit him right here, right in the breadbasket. Go on, give him a real big suck. I don't know. Oh, the only do danger it. is breaking your arm. What are you afraid of? Don't be a wuss, do it. Oh no. Oh Hey, sometimes he gets carried away. No, the other guy deserved it. What kind of a two-bit show is this? Your freak nearly killed me. Get him, Bertram! Get him, Bertram! Slam him down! RKO, come on! Just throw him! Oh! Tis I, Magnificor the Magnificent, and I have tamed the beast! Drop him! Ladies and gentlemen, I, Magnificor the Magnificent, am a master of. Apparition! <laughs> and dissipation! And even the art of <laughs> transfiguration! <laughs> what 
What is that? Oh. <laughs> I have mastered hypnosis, telekinesis, telepathy, and escapology. And now, for my next feat, I will relieve Miss Marjorie of her for this. <laughs> what? Oh. Damn it. We were gonna give them a show. You're not like that, you're not. I give up. Go follow your brother. <laughs> well, that's our show. Huh? Thanks, Sandy. All tickets. I want my money back. Okay, just leave the yeah, just leave the drunk guy there. <laughs> <laughs> well, tiny people and tiny headed giants, curious things. They are a delight and can make you money. So, before you snuff out that oddly shaped baby, bring them to me. <laughs> I discovered this nice next sales pitch. act in a tiny village in Italy. Truly the most exotic of places in the world. He was just a ten-year-old boy. I raised him. I bathed him. I shaved him from head to toe. He is truly a wonder to behold. Presenting Benjamin Lazarus. Oh, do you know where you're going, buddy? Welcome! Welcome! Welcome to my incredible display of dark arts and mystical prowess, my dear ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's unfortunate fact that in this mortal coil we are all born to suffer from all manner of maladies in daily life. Who here has not had a friend or loved one near death's door from coal gas fumes, typhoid fever, diphtheria, or the bite of a rabid animal? <laughs> the greatest wealth is your health. All the gold in the world cannot purchase it, and yet it is the most delicate and tenuous of all life's gifts. And nothing knocks down death's door faster than this. <laughs> okay. A man cannot outrun a bullet. Many fools have tried and failed in this endeavor, including the tonic salesman I caught petting my wife. <laughs> I joke. I joke. <laughs> I assure you, he has met his maker and they are playing gin rummy among the molten lava of Hades. <laughs> I have traveled all around the world, this delighting young and old with all manner of feats of amazement, but none are as dangerous as what I am prepared to attempt tonight. Which is? I will hand this Didi Packenbush revolver over to my assistant and stand at considerable distance across the stage. She will point the revolver at my head and pull the trigger using lightning quick reflexes taught to me by a tiny man I met in the distant orient. I will catch the bullet in my teeth. Yes, my All right. To prove that these are indeed live rounds, if my sharpshooting assistant would be so kind as to shoot this bottle of Lalicoma off my head. This is insane. Yeah! Off my head. Here we go. Careful. Yeah. I could do without a bullet in the brain right now. Okay. Oh my god. Come on. Oh my god. Okay. That bit always scares me. <laughs> now, observe. As I, the great Benjamin Lazarus, will do what no man has ever done and cheat death. Are we about to witness a murder? <laughs> Please don't kill him or else I'll have to ask for a refund. That's 
ridiculous. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay, so one live and Thank one blank. <laughs> Best show in Sandini. Let's do that again. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Oh, don't tell me they're gonna mess You're up this time. My leg. This is a bunch of dang boulder dash. Ah. <laughs> a skeptic. Hmm? I'm ah. I'm Benjamin Lazarus. I assure you, I am not participating in some hoax or carnival ruse. These bullets are 100% real. In fact, I challenge any member of the audience to come forward with their own firearm and I will yet again display my uncanny skill to catch a bullet this in is my best show I've seen. Oh. Is no one man enough? I'm gonna do it. Alright, fantastic. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will prove to you I am the greatest entertainer to ever live and the only man who laughs at death. Now, ready? Take care. Gotta respect it. It's just an illusion, after all. All right. <laughs> I won't deny. I thought I was gonna kill him right then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Truly. A feat of incredibility. I told you that boy would bring you all manner of personal satisfaction. He certainly does me. <laughs> all right, now, more than we needed to I know. I discovered this next remarkable woman in the lost jungle, <laughs> deep in the wilds of Colombia, where they do not wear clothes. She breathes fire. Yes, she does. And for those with the universal and not unworthy curiosity, yes, I can attest, she does emit fire from almost <laughs> every orifice in her body. <laughs> Presenting Antoinette San Servino! I'm just happy I didn't accidentally kill the last guy. Because I was worried. Now here's a show Arthur can get behind. Are we finally gonna get to the fire breathing portion? There we go. Great commentary, Arthur. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Woo, you gotta love yourself a bird. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, fire lady. Gotta love Arthur. Was that the end of it? Oh, wonderful. Oh, incredible. It's still hot in here, huh? <laughs> incredible. Bravo. Though I must warn you, court her at your peril. She'll not nurse babies. She'd turn them into bacon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. He liked that joke. Yes. Bye discovered this next woman in the kingdom of Poland, 
where she sang by the roadside, subsisting on coppers tossed at her feet. Miss Robin Koninsky! All right, so there's more to it. I sure give you a lot for two dollars. Hello! Thanks for joining us today. This here was a new song about a so-called modern improvement you may have become aware of called the telephone. Yeah. This new machine will carry a facsimile of your voice from Blackwater to Valentine to San Denis. And they propose to distribute them to all manner of places so that no matter where you are, somebody is looking for you. <laughs> a wise man prayed that one day we may all eventually be gathered together in a heaven of everlasting rest and peace and bliss. Except for the inventor of the telephone. Because someone is always calling, saying, Hello! Hello! I've got a little baby, but he's out of sight. I talk to him. I do love her voice. tune she is a siren singing from the rocks as men bash into them to their doom <laughs> thank you for joining me for tonight's entertainment i hope it has delayed for at least a moment the crushing and remorseless misery of this mortal coil good night dream well and come back soon Awesome! I did not expect it to be that long. But cool experience. We still have to figure out when to go see Margaret. But we did get to see Marjorie. Still kind of impressed by the bullet guy, not gonna lie. Quite something. Yeah, I gotta go deal with this. Oh, there's something here for you. Oh, good luck. Oh. These novelty acts. Don't get this for dancing girls. Oh, okay, letter from Miss Marjorie. Oh, and 40 bucks. All right. What a lovely surprise. It was so sweet of you Everyone to come and see our board. show. Bless. I hope it is a good one for you. Audiences can be terrible here and the boys, well, they are simply thrilled to know you're in, in their own special ways. Here is the cut of the proceeds. You're, oh, that's right. She did promise cut of the proceeds. All right. I didn't really expect her to uphold that bargain, but I mean, thank you. All right. Did we come in here when it was daytime? I mean, I know girl. daytime, but like morning. Maybe. All right. Um. Professor's over there. Dutch is huh? over here. She can do. Hair. Oh, oh, come on. What? Uh, what? 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 There you go. Now shut the hell up. Hey, she got her mind. What's wrong with you? Let's go. Oh, it sucks to be you guys. Oh. That's what you get for being noisy outside somebody's window when they're trying to sleep. You chose a nice park to hang out in for the past uh, three days. Oh, I see him. Hey, Dutch, how's it been? There you are. You boys ready? Of course. What else do you know about this guy? Not much, just these some slick little greasy haired European clearly got power and money. Now, listen, 
If we go in there and start shooting up the place, boy's gonna get shot, that I guarantee. Mm. Better like this, you're gonna have a lot of protection. Hey, no one's yep. gonna get shot, Arthur, so everyone just relax. We'll charm them. Trust me. This the place? I do love this house. <clears throat> Must be. You okay, John? I guess. Excuse me, sir. We have an appointment to see Mr. Bronte. Who are you? You get your boss down here and now so we can talk about this like gentlemen. Run along now, boy. Was that the special Dutch charm I heard so much about? Relax. <laughs> I got this. I mean, we got a meeting. Don't worry, boys. We come in peace. We just need to straighten a couple of things out with your boss. Oh, he does have a lot of people. Nathan. Chi sono sti buffoni? Sono qui per picciotto. Coi soldi? Why do you take his son? Excuse me. I said, why did you take his son? We ain't got no problems with you, sir. Nor you with us. But if you want to start one, there's going to be a lot of folks dead in this room before it's done. So, you walk into my city, stinking of shit and looking like this, and you come into my house before you have a bath and you tell me how to act? You ask me to show compassion. Have I not shown you almost infinite compassion already by simply allowing you to breathe in my presence? Indeed you have. Now, we are simple country folk. All we have is each other. And you have gone and you have took his son over some dispute with some inbred ex-slavers, it ain't got nothing to do with any one of us. You had nothing to do with destroying the liquor business! We was innocent bystanders. And that which we weren't innocent of, well, we, we most surely were ignorant of. You, you, you twist words. You lie shamelessly. You think you are better than everyone else. I'm not gonna lie, he has a point. <laughs> that is a very <laughs> steep woman here. Angelo Bronte. This guy's kind Dutch of a vibe. Vanderland. Uh, Arthur Morgan. Arthur, uh, the pleasure is mine. John Marston. <laughs> All mine, please. <laughs> All of them on that tiny couch. So, uh, can my friend have his son? Of course, of course. <laughs> But uh, should I be out of pocket over a misunderstanding? Mm. Oh, of course I know you would not want that, huh? Uh, no. No, no, no. So how about this? You perform a simple job for me, and you get your son back. What, what kind of job? It? A couple of people have taken to grave robbing in the cemetery. Well, that is a fine place for it, the best. <laughs> I love this guy. I love you. <laughs> See, they've taken not only to desecrating the dead, but they've done so without paying a tribute to the living. Mm. Thing is, they see my men, of course, they run a mile. So maybe you two head off, huh? And you, Mr. Van der Lind, why you tell me more about my manners? <laughs> Salute. Salute. Uh, there's no way this doesn't go south, but I'm just gonna put it out there. I like Angelo Bronte. He's a vibe. You come into my house and threaten me, but the real problem is that you put your dirty shoes on my fine carpets. Grave robbers? You think he's taking us for a fool? No idea. What choice do we have? None, I guess. 
This is idiotic. You know where the cemetery is? I think so. Pretty sure I rode by it earlier. It's real impressive. You know. Ah, uh, this place is so pretty at you night. You did good. Holding your tongue in there. Do you trust one word that comes out of that bastard's mouth? No. We don't even know where Jack is. Listen, we found Bronte. We got in there. Dutch is with him now. All things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. That poor kid. I ain't been a good father to him. I hope... <sighs> He's okay. He'll be fine. I figure... The Braithwaites were going to hold Jack Branson. For all the money we cost him. We must have mm. sent him here so we couldn't get oh, to him. Know. But... Bronte knows by now there's no Braithwaites left to pay him. True. Jack ain't much use to him anymore. Let's just get this done. Let Dutch handle the rest. I just hope you're right. I'm mesmerized by how pretty this place is at night. Yeah, this is gonna go south in some way. But I do like Angelo Bronte. Once again, I love that like Dutch's crew dislike people who have similar qualities to okay. Dutch. I think this is it. Keep or maybe down. just Arthur. Let's hitch your horses up ahead. Following you, John. Let's go stop some grave robbers. Hang out in the cemetery. See, that's so pretty right there. Okay. Stop getting distracted. This way. These are my favorite kinds of cemeteries, too. The above ground. Come on. Let's find him and get the hell out of here. Sooner we get this done, sooner we get Jack back. I love graveyards like this. Don't want him to bolt on us. We're gonna keep it down. I probably don't have to do that. John? I hear someone. Oh, got a drunk, probably. You don't look like much of a grave oh, robber. Um, sorry, sorry. I had a, I had a bit to drink. Friend died. Aw. They can hear us, you know. They're still with us. You should get oh. yourself home. Who was that that ran through here? They like ran this way. Or maybe they were one step down? Shush. Keep looking. I could have sworn I saw someone run when the drunk turned the corner. Shush, puppy. Shh. Well, looks like someone's been here. Oh, ma'am? I'm gonna push your head. You wash my back. Was she the one I saw running? I know, but getting 
cover, and we'll bust the door in. All right, let's do it. You boys found my puppies watching. Oh. Oh. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. They're going to ground, Morgan. You should have paid Mr. Bronte. Bastards are trying to draw us out. Where are you at? Oh, crap, I lost him. You think you can rob us? Oh. Please, Wait, oh, there you are. And this is gonna wake a few people up. No doubt. John, find the other one. I found him. You can hardly see what I'm shooting there. It moves plastic. Or I thought I found him. I can think of better ways to spend an evening. Next time, time. Oh no, that's kind of fun. Shit! Start running! Oh! Come on! Get out! Oh! There we go. Give me my hat. That's that's a stranger. That's not my hat. I was gonna say, where's my stuff? Let's stay on them. Come on. Okay, but like, I'm doing the work here, John. So. Oh, there you are. Oh, come on. Slippery. Dang it. It's a dead end. John? Would be great if you'd help out here. Let's stay on him. Come on. All right. I'm just going to Oh, whoa. There we go. He was hiding, waiting. It's fun. It's like a little graveyard hide and seek. Now let's find their stash. Gotta be around here someplace. Okay, but we'll need to be quick. We can't go back to Bronte empty-handed. Let's have a look where they first shot at us from. All right. Robin grave robbers. We've hit the big time. It's that one, right? No, it's way over there. Man's graveyard's massive. Arthur, Arthur, why are Think we walking? Think there might be something okay. in here. That's why Arthur was just Not walking on his own. Good. He found it. Now let's get out of here. Damn, the law's here. Come on, let's see if that gate's open. It's not going to be, is it's it? It's locked. We'll have to go back the way we came. Damn All right. John, follow me. You take the perimeter. The best. Ooh. There went my plan.
is the third time I've had to pause because of flyovers. John, you are way back there. Make some moves, buddy. Oh, okay. Now you're suddenly beside me. That's fine. Oh, this horse belongs to John. When did he park on the other side of me? John! The law is right there! Why are you walking? There we go, buddy. Oh! It was too dark to see. That was not my fault, sir. Why were you in the road? Also, why won't hammers... There we go. Did we talk to John about anything? No. Tried to hit another person. It's a little bit dark and misty outside. So they did a really good job with the mist and how it distorts the light. Alright, let's get this done. You coming, John? Well, you took your time. Where's your host? Ah. Like I said. Hey, you kiddo. Took your time. Ah. I'm glad to see you. Let's get going. What a fine man. Hey, friend. Uh, thank Mr. Ready? Bronte you all for right? everything. Yeah, I'm fine. Come on. You know, Arthur. Hmm. Mr. Bronte has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. Ooh. <laughs> and us, just simple country boys. Got you out here making friends. Let's go! We have a new camp set up, Jack. You're gonna love it. And we got the boy back. That was relatively quick and simple. All right, let's get this boy back to his mother. You sure you're okay, son? I'm fine. Papa Bronte said you'd come for me. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Papa what Bronte? For? for that. For taking so long. I had a fun time. I had my own room with a big bed and a toy box. And lots of books. Oh. Did they do anything to you? Have you ever had spaghetti? What? What's that? It's food. It looks like worms, but it's delicious. <laughs> Is that right? Papa Bronte teach me lots of Italian words. Don't call him that, please. You know, cavallo? That means horse. And pantafola? That's a slipper. A slipper? Get out here they living the high tickets. life. One for day and one for night. Well, uh, I'm just glad you're all right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Best time. But I can't wait to see Mama. Did she miss me? She sure did. Like you wouldn't know. See, I could have waited a lot more. He was fine. Real good to see you, Jack. You too, Uncle Arthur. Did you catch the bad guys? Which ones? At the graveyard. Uncle Dutch and Papa Bronte told me. Just Mr. Bronte. Yeah. Me and your pa dealt with him. I told him you would. Wait till you see this new camp. Not another one. Well, this one's got a house. Not as nice as Mr. Bronte's, mind you. That's okay. We'll get you settled and cleaned up in no time. Oh, I had a bath last night. <sighs> of course you did. <laughs> yeah, I could have waited a little bit longer. The kid was fine. He's out here having day and night slippers, having spaghetti, learning Italian. It's like boarding school. Like I said, that was too... that was too easy. Interested to see how this goes south. Because there's no way we're done with Angelo Bronte. He's too interesting of a character. I think I see Jack! Abigail! Abigail! We got you, your son! Everything! We got him! Mama! He's fine! I'm fine, Mama! <laughs> they said he was good. Italian <laughs> You ever eat that? Come here, you silly boy. Ah. <laughs> you got him. You got my son back. Dutch, Arthur, thank you. Thank you. I got my 
my son back! Jack! 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 How are you, oh, boy? Poor John. I'm fine, thanks. Everything's okay now. Abigail? Can I go play now? <sighs> so, well, we met Mr. Bronte. Hmm. He is, uh, quite a character. Is he now? You ever meet an Italian strong man before? <sighs> Not outside of a circus. Well, let me tell you all about him. John, you go be with your family. Arthur, thank you. Boys, we got some work to do. Interesting work. But first, let's have a drink. Oh, Dutch, please don't try <laughs> to rob Jack Bronte. <laughs> well, the boy's safe, thank goodness. Everyone thank you, Arthur. I... <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. Thank you. I understand. Come on. Do as Dutch says. <clears throat> Go be with your family. He's back, all right. Let's go hang out. Hey, make some room for John there. Come on, are we staying here? What? Yeah, we're Hey, no. How about a song? Oh, huh? Javier, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> play us away. <laughs> All right, we got another party going on. I can see where we can get drinks on the map. You know what our boy needs to drink. Micah. Had fun robbing graves, I hear. A little bit. Yeah, that's more your style. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk more later. <laughs> Loitering suspiciously as usual. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to give you all your moment. No. Oh, how very kind. Be nice to Kieran. He's proved himself. Well, I should get back to it. You take care now, Arthur. You too, Kieran. You okay, Sadie? Sure. You boys did good. Well, we got lucky this time. Anyway, I won't disturb you. Okay, then. I want more missions with Sadie. You're joining in? Not really in the mood. Okay. Okay, I'll catch you later, then. Talk to you later. You ain't joining the party, Reverend? I don't want to ruin it. Aww. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. All right, well, I should be getting on. Oh, uh, yes. There's something on the map. What am I seeing? Okay, one second. Oh, maybe it's this I'm seeing? Okay. It has a little question mark over the top of it. That's why I was a little bit confused. Because it has the normal stranger marker with Professor on it, but then it has that little question mark. Get you a drink, Arthur. <laughs> All right, let's give this boy space. See you later. Good night, Aww. Jackie. We missed you. Welcome back, Jack. Thanks. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. No, you just gonna sit in the mud? You just had a you bath. Must be starving, son. Let me get you something to eat. Thanks, Mama. Can I play a little? Of course you can. Well done, John. Couldn't have done it without Dutch and Arthur. The old guard. I'm very relieved. We all are. Yeah. Thank God it worked out. <laughs> Welcome back, Jack. Thanks, Uncle Jose. Well, I'll let you fine folks get reacquainted. We did it. Well done. That's a weight off. Right. You know, me and you should go get some drinks in San Denis sometime. <laughs> Let's do it, Lenny. I so that's a good idea. Yes, it's a great idea. Uh, it was one bad night. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Tahiti. All right, off. Tahiti. Tahiti? If you say so. <laughs> Mangoes, maidens, paradise, an unspoiled paradise. Yeah, I hope so. Faith, Arthur, 
Have a little faith. Have a little faith, Arthur. Okay, I'll catch you later, then. Whatever you say. Miss Grimshaw. Happy Miss Grimshaw. Very well done, Arthur. Well, let's have some fun. Well, I should get back to it. We'll see you later. No stopping you, Karen. You better believe it. <laughs> Just save some for the rest of us. Okay, well, let's talk okay, more later. Mama. Okay. Sorry it ain't spaghetti. Good to see you smiling again, Abigail. Thank you again. Truly. Uh, he was fine. I missed that little rascal. Anyway, I won't disturb you. Take care, Arthur. Look after that kid. Oh, I will. He's a brave boy. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Okay. Javier plays good, don't he? He sure does. Well, let's have a good night. We deserve one. You guys do. More drinks. Come on. Okay, I'm hitting the sack. You okay, Pearson? Yes, indeed. Feels like we can move forward again. I hope so. Well, I should get back to it. Sure, well, as you were. So good to have you back. Thanks, Uncle Arthur. And to see a smile on your mama's face again. Even these two are singing together. Wind around his head. And me being a little fool and thinking it no harm. I jumped in bed beside him. We did it. Yes, we did. Thank God. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay. Ain't no being lost. Maybe play something for Jack later. I'll ask him in a bit. Okay. It was only invented to make you feel something out of nothing. It makes no difference. Ain't sure nothing makes a difference. Can't see how. Tide comes in, tide goes out. You was born, you die. In between, you do what you do. Ain't no good, ain't no bad, just things that make you feel good or make you feel sad and just the length of time between being born and dying that's all there is <laughs> ain't no old man judging man ain't no heaven and maybe there is damnation But I think I know what that'll be like. And I'm gonna be right at home there. That's the most sense that we've That's really it. gotten on Micah. See it for what the hell it is. Hmm. All right. Well, the mood certainly went down after that one. No, no! Oh, God, don't. It's all coming back to me. Do it again. <laughs> Good times. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Okay. Oh, Mr. Smith, can I get you a libation of some kind? I think I'm all right. Sad enough? Anyway, I won't disturb you. All right. Won't you go ride an Abigail up? I wouldn't dream of it. Just let her have this moment. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Whatever you say. I was hearing these two argue. Oh, Jenny, they don't seem to care about Oh, yes, I can see. Very. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I have the feeling you're about to tell me. You have ruined my life. Well, have you walking all the night? And all your shoulders look like sure a you do. Then I'll you see everything differently. When you're pale, you pay. You'll have to walk only half the way. Left side with a cunning laugh. You'll have to push the other. Is she okay? 
clearly not. It's getting very tiresome. Yeah, she seems pretty worked up. Okay, well, let's talk more later. All right, then. Oh, you sure did stop short. Anything out of you, Molly? I'm still looking for Tilly. I'll check in the house. You all right there, Mary Beth? Yeah, just watching it all. Go on, have another drink. It's a party after all. Let me check in the house. Oh, it's dark in here. No. Okay, long oh. day. I'm gonna turn in. Good to have you back too, Tilly. You've been rescuing people left and right. Well, it weren't just me. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay. All right, at least we know Tilly's okay. Let's head back outside. Oh, Dutch, who are you talking to now? There he is, old Arthur. Miss Karen? The strong, silent, manly one of us. <laughs> You're drunk. This ain't drunk, Arthur. It smells drunk. Well, then don't smell it, you stuck-up piece of shit. God damn oh. you. Take it easy, Miss Karen. Is she trying to put the moves on anyway, Arthur? I won't disturb you. Sure, Arthur. Vengeance on! We are gonna be free! Free! Yes, we are, Dutch! That's right, boss. Too right, Dutch! Interesting how the storm was rolling in during that speech. Good times, Pearson. Uh-huh. I think we're gonna be okay, Mr. Morgan. See, See if you feel the same in the morning. Keep this party going, Javier. All day long on the we did it. He's back. Ah, Lenny. Hey there. Micah. Hey. Bill. Gentlemen. Hey. Arthur Morgan. How's it all going? I couldn't be happy. I carry my wardrobe. Oh, start singing. You all right, Charles? Yeah, just it all in. Pot. And Joy's I sleep good to have a kid brown quantum cot. <laughs> you fellas certainly know my how to have fun, Mr. Arthur. Arthur. Shiny sure. White my books <laughs> if I had guns, stayed with old Driscoll, sermons, you'd stone. probably kill me by now. Probably. Never think of that. Not really. We'd have both died. Sometimes Six points, Kevin. Yeah. That's sweet. Oh, brother. Really? You tried. <laughs> okay, I'll catch you later, then. Get you some sleep, Karen. Hey, Lenny. Hey. Alrighty. Let's see about heading inside. I don't go talk to Strauss anymore. He hangs out on his own over at that house now, doesn't he? out on his own now. Might as well head upstairs, let Arthur get some sleep. And then we can go off and do the side missions that I passed over. Oh. I leave for a couple of seconds and it sounds like Pearson and Bill got into a fight. Pick up the pace, Arthur. I don't want to miss the drama. Oh, maybe Pearson just fell down. He does look drunk. You all right? <coughs> I'm fine. You 
two star bags for that idiot. Yeah, I guess he just fell down. Making me come all the way out here once it starts pouring raining just to check on Pearson. Alright. Hey. Karen, would you like to at least sit on the porch where you won't get wet? Come on, Strauss, we're celebrating! I'm very happy to see young Jack again. Well, smile then. Well, I should get back to it. Be well. Okay. More than likely, when we go to sleep and get back up, we will have a new set of missions. But I do want to go and see Charles and the Professor before we start. Pearson? Okay, every time we come up here, Pearson, something's going on, but... Oh, I can't do anything right now with that. Alright, Dutch is asleep. No idea where Molly is. And this is the room. John's family took over. Um. Okay, so back at it. We do have a letter here My that was- My dear Arthur, I hope this letter finds you well. Uh, of course. I wanted to thank you for your help with Jamie. He and Daddy are still arguing, but I understand that Jamie is thinking about going back to college. Whatever happens, I believe you saved his life and we are all truly grateful. Oh, Arthur, I have made such a mess of my life time and again. Why can I not change and be the woman I want to be? Why couldn't you change and be a man and put down all those fantasies that shroud your judgment? Life is very confusing. And I see now that I'm not very good at it. I'm afraid we've got ourselves into another mess. It's not my fault, but I need your help. I'm staying at the Hotel Grand in San Denis. Oh, Arthur. I know it is wrong to ask you. Then why ask? But I have nobody else. And for what we once had together, I beg of you. Even though I am... Ashamed to do so. Obviously not. Yours, Mary. We found ourselves in a mess. Woman, whatever you've done, this is like a you problem. I swear. Don't write your ex a letter about your own pity party. And now we have to go. Yep, now she's on the map. I probably should not dislike this woman as much as I do, but it's... Uh, I don't doubt that maybe she really does... Is this a wanted poster in the house? Oh. Oh, it's Javier's wanted poster. <laughs> Wait a minute. A thousand dollars for Javier. All right. Oh. Okay, I took it, but there's still one on the wall. I kind of love that. I like to think that Javier put that up himself. Karen? You awake? Dang, what do you want? Why are you on the- Ah, it's none. Well, I'm gonna rest. Right there? I guess so, never mind. You do whatever makes you happy. Oh, as I was gonna say, I don't doubt that Mary loves Arthur, but also you ran off to marry someone else? Don't write a little pity party to your ex about how why they should help you. Are you well? <laughs> All good. You know Hello. Me. Mrs. Adler? Hey. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? Just checking in. Okay, the stew is currently being prepared. Check back at noon. I can do that. 
I want some coffee. Say to stop hogging it. I guess we can go take care of that. Actually, you know what? More important things. We need to go see Charles and the uh, professor. I almost forgot his name. Lenny. Hey there. Hey. You got a good head on your shoulders. I do. Just make sure you don't get too big for your britches. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> don't worry, I'm just playing with you. All right, Arthur. You play your games. Charles. Nothing from Charles. You okay, Charles? Yeah. You did good getting the boy back. All in the past now. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Yep. Holy screaming. Not the only person that hears it, right? It's just like off in the distance. Is it Swanson? Swanson, are you high again? And screaming at the swamp? Oh, can I not talk to Dutch? He keeps walking away from me. Good morning. Trelawney! Good morning, Arthur. I thought you left. Still here, then. Well, how charming. Well, you do have a habit of disappearing. Sounds good. <laughs> Something in my head did not connect. I thought that maybe Dutch, like, changed his jacket since we passed... A massive point in the game. Maybe he did a little outfit change, but no, it's Trelawney. I thought he left. Okay, Trelawney, welcome back. I really assumed that you had left us. I wonder if I sit down for dominoes, who all will play? Oh, it's locked. That makes sense. Mr. Morgan, I had your stuff unloaded. Thank you. I put you in one of the upstairs bedrooms. I thought that would be a little nicer for you. I mean, the place is a dump, but we can survive here. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's great if you love alligators and mosquitoes. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, it's left at the top of the stairs and head on to the end of the landing. Thank you. I've already been over there. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Okay. You recovered? I'll be fine. Thank you, Arthur. Of course. Just glad you're okay. Alright. Let's head on into town. If anything, I'll just go to a saloon and bathe and feed Arthur. Oh, wait. What's up with the camp? Hold up. Oh, is, is it ammunition that's the problem? I think so. That can be something to take care of when we come back, because I probably will come back here before going to see Hosea? Why is his mission right here? Oh, it is. Hosea needs to speak with you. Um, Hosea, we can wait on that for a couple of, not episodes, but I was gonna say minutes. Up, oh, drink it so we can go. Finish your coffee. We can wait on that, Hosea, for just a little while. Because my fear right now is that Dutch, wanting to get money and get the hell out of Dodge, saw how nice Mr. Bronte's been living and wants to rob him in some capacity or is going to do something that is going to put us at odds with Bronte. Because he's just too interesting of a character to introduce... And then suddenly we have no more interactions with him. And I really do enjoy Bronte. Yeah. I thought that was a cool introduction to him. I like his attitude. I don't care that you come into my house and threaten me, but how dare you come into my house dirty. I like him. He's a cool guy. Did kidnap the kid. But also, the kid was 100% fine. If anything, we probably could have left the kid there and he would have had a better life than what he would have had running off on the road with a bunch of outlaws. Of course, Bronte is a criminal. I just hit that wagon. Of course, Bronte is a criminal, but he's like a classy criminal who will teach you Italian and give you spaghetti. Kid would have been fine. He would have grew up to be a classy criminal. 
All right, completely avoiding the needy ex-girlfriend. We're gonna go see my bestie Charles. Charles, where are you? Oh, he's upstairs. How does one get upstairs? Charles! I want to talk to you! Can I jump up there? No. Oh, maybe it's a door? Oh, I'm an idiot. It's right here. Let's go see what's going on with our second best buddy, Charles. Our second best buddy who's also show, named Charles. If that's possible. It's a free show. So don't come ask me. I just don't like how much time you're spending with the man is all. Just wait until you see his work. It's very progressive. Well, I'm not so very sure how I feel about progression. Paintings or otherwise. Come oh. on. You won't have seen the like of it before. I promise. Maybe that's a good thing. Hold, hold on. Let me compose myself. Hey, be careful when you talk about my buddy's art, okay? He might be sleeping with your wife, but he's still a decent artist, and you can't take that away from him. Ooh. I think that it's Greek. I mean, yeah, obviously. Or could be Roman. Hmm. Was it just supposed to be looking for him? You know, it's Italian, most likely. Oh, there's my buddy. The man. Wait, I want to look around a bit more, Charles. For my tastes. Mr. Chardonnay, he's just a terror. It's making me blush. Be nice to my friend. I find the brushwork. Baffling. Baffling. What's he trying to represent aside from a filthy mess? Look at these idiots. You know. Excuse me, Mr. Chatonet. Couldn't you have painted some drawers on her? No. Madame, I paint her in her natural state, as she was and will be in paradise. There's nothing natural about that. Clothes are civilization, repression, death. To be naked is to be free, innocent, alive. Like Buddha said, you know, we are all just here to fuck. <gasps> well, that explains the decadence of those hot and tots. Hey, you got a picture of my wife here, in her delicate. <gasps> How do you know that's is your that wife? Is that your behind? Oh, why would you be shown it to that man? That's my mama. <gasps> as nude as the day she was born. Stop looking at my husband's buttocks. Stop looking at my mama. Well, maybe <laughs> she shouldn't expose herself like that. This is disgusting. The nerve on you. That's it. Oh, oh, come on, Mildred. <laughs> this is no place for us. Come here, I am a bitch. Oh, Charles, you might run. Oh, oh, <laughs> come on, horse. We're leaving. Hey, I'm coming after you, Frenchie. Hey. Oh, and no, right. you're not. Leave my friend alone. Oh, am I supposed to just fight everyone? Yeah, this is for art. <laughs> Come on. Wasting my time. Hey, where you gone off to, Frenchman? Charles, I didn't even really get to see the entire exhibit because. A minute. Are these Mr. Mason's photos? Oh, there's one of Arthur. Okay, I have to get back to the mission, but Arthur's in an art exhibit. We are a man of class. Charles, where are you going? I guess I'm just gonna follow you silently as we leave the scene of the crime. This way, is this way, come on. That's the way I'll keep. Yes, Abishan, what can you say? It was not boring. No, it was not. It was a good time. It was not. 
Charles away, I love him. I know a lady over here. She may let me stay for a while. Okay. Good luck. That picture I gave you. It could be worth something someday. I can feel it. Perhaps. Right now it seems like the only thing it'd get me is kicking the balls. Oh, you are funny, you know. I hope to see you again sometime. Say into you! Oh, but you guys did a cat drop in the sky. Kitty, are you okay? Hey, kitty. Where did the kitty come from? It just fell from the sky. Oh, Arthur was in an exhibit. Oh, see, that's so much better than going to see your needy ex. Oh, man. Okay, we might as well go check on the professor before we end off this episode. <laughs> I love on, Charles. Girl. I need more missions with him. <laughs> I can't believe him. Did he invite the people to the exhibit himself? Whose loved ones just happened to be part of the exhibit? Gotta respect it. Art should make you feel something. Alright, Professor. Moving a little bit slow. Okay, let's go down. How's the electric chair coming along, my friend? Ah, hello, friend! Hello, Professor... Professor... Andrew Bell the Third. That's it. So, the Chief says you can test out your machine, oh. pending the usual formalities. And what are they? Uh, finding a suitable, uh, subject. Ah, funny you should mention. This fella here, he seems sturdy enough, and he's guilty as sin. Wilson J. McDaniels. Wanted for murder, bigamy, and immoral animal husbandry. What's that? The mind shudders. Yeah, I don't want to ah. know. Don't explain it. Here, find him for me and help me put him out of his misery. Huh. <laughs> All right. Capture McDaniels alive. That way we can execute him in our fancy chair. Oh, wait, sir, where are you? Oh, you're all the way up here. Okay. Huh. I'm wondering, should I just leave this? No. No, we're already, we're already on this mission. We've already committed to it a little bit. Okay. Let's see, let's chart a course. Oh man, that is a ways off. It's fine. What would be the best place to fast travel to if that was what I was gonna do? Emerald Ranch, yeah. Oh, look at the puppy. I can't camp out in the wilderness. Okay. Get a little bit outside of town and then fast travel. Got to feed Arthur, then fast travel over to Emerald Ranch and continue that ways up. Okay, I believe I have found our friend. He's got a couple of animals. Oh! Are you not my guy? Maybe not. Oh, focus up, Arthur. There we go. Oh. You're running off. 
I think you are. Come here, horsey. Yep. Can't let you do that. All right, sir. You don't have a choice. I've got a special treat for you. Born free. I was born free, goddamn you. You're really gonna wish I had just shot you. This is very kind of you. Oh, grab him. Oh. Right, there we go. <laughs> Hammer, can you come here, please? We are going to stow and get our buddy here back to the professor. Oh, sir, you're gonna wish you had just died. This ain't America. We ain't free no more. Can't raise no animals, take no wives. All I did was graze my livestock. Married them that needed marrying and killed any that tried to stop it. I ain't wrong. It's you that's wrong. We was trying to live free. You came along and laid waste. Take me in, just take me to the jailhouse. Okay, you know what? We're nope. just gonna take you to the you chair. Ain't going to court. You ain't going to jail either. I'm taking you to a professor I know. What in hell are you talking about? You're a lucky man, mister. You get to be part of a great An experiment. experiment. Shut up. Huh? You ain't gonna die needlessly, is what I mean. Nope. Your death's gonna be an uh, important step in the advancement of human knowledge. Yeah. What in hell you say, mister? This professor, Andrew Bell III, I believe he said. He's a little odd, maybe harebrained, but I got no reason to doubt the quality of his work. What's this damn professor got to do with anything? Well, he wants to try this. New electricity chair on to kill you. You may. <laughs> Mainly. No. Yeah. Well, he's gonna strap you into this contraption and run a large electric current through your system. It's got something to do with moonshine. Don't quite know what. <laughs> I guess that's why he's the professor and I'm the bounty catcher. <laughs> well, as I said, I can pass on his assurances that this is a most humane way to go. Uh -huh. Just like, well, like switching off a light. <laughs> they wouldn't let you do this to me. They wouldn't. Oh, they would. And we got a permit and everything. We do. You was in animal husbandry, am I right? Well, you ever seen lightning strike livestock, Mr. McDaniels? Now, I ain't ever seen the actual impact, but I came across the pasture sometime after. The storm had just cleared and there was smoke in the air. Smell of burning hair. No. There must have been a dozen head of cattle lying there, piled up, mangled. Strange scars across their backs, legs, and necks. It's half like they was burned, and half like the skin was ripped off. No. Eyes bleeding. Some of them popped out. No. If I hadn't seen the storm, <laughs> I would have thought some devil caused that mischief, but no, sir. It was light. The electricity does something all right. I seen trees explode in front of me. I seen desert sand baked into glass. Mm -hmm. That's what I seen lightning do. But, you know, hey, this electricity professor's got a plan for you. Ah, oh, that must be of an entirely right. different kind. That's the fellow that took out Ah, uh, of course. Well. Hmm. Oh, really? Okay, there we go. I stay on the road. Oh, I'm getting off the road. Now I'm back on the road. Oh, someone's still alive. Hold up. Uh, he 
gone? There we go. I'm sorry about that, McDaniels. You all right? <laughs> Are you crying? Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. Well, you'll be happy to know we ain't got far to go. Hold on tight now. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's just a little bit of electricity. This is this is gonna go terribly, but I'm kinda looking forward to it. Alright, Professor. Oh, what do you sorry, have? sir. Here we are. The professor will be real pleased to meet you. <gasps> no. Professor, I brought you back a present. I got him. You're wonderful. Just come on. <sighs> Don't be shy now. Let's go. Oh, hammer? Hammer, hammer. I gotta take him in, girl. Bring him to me. Now, where's my money? Um, money? Yeah, for all the running around I've been doing. Oh, well, once they buy my humane electric ending facilitator, there'll be money enough for you, sir. Well, let's hope. All right, let's get our, our, um... Our poor unfortunate, ready for the demonstration. Oh, do come and watch. It'll be amazing. Come along. Okay. Can we go watch? Let's follow him for a little bit and see if it goes straight to where we want to go. Hammer, why'd you go all the way over there, girl? All right, I have followed Professor Bell to what I believe is a public execution area. Is it already set up? Or maybe this is the come back later thing? It's probably... I would hope it would be an event. That way we could actually see the results. Okay, so maybe we are done for now. Because it doesn't look like they have it all set up yet. So through. we're actually going to end the episode here. I'm going to go take care of Arthur, get him fed at the saloon, give him a bath really quick. And then more than likely, we will go see Hosea long before we go see Arthur's ex. Just because I don't really have an interest in going and seeing this woman or whatever it is that she needs. It's apparently a wee problem. But I do hope you guys enjoyed. I'm very interested to see where this goes from here. Because there's no way we're done with Angelo Bronte. He's too interesting of a character. And I'm a little bit worried the Dutch is going to try to rob him in some way. Or do something that's going to mess with Angelo Bronte's income. Which is going to give us issues with him. But we will find out. So we are going to probably, like I said, hit up Hosea when we come back and then go see Mary later on. But I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you join me again and I'll be seeing you very soon. Bye.